The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, folks. This is Jacob filling in for Basil. I love that intro so much. It makes me feel like I'm in like a Tarantino movie or something, but it's it's great. Um, folks, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648 if you got any questions. I want to crack in quickly uh, to NVIDIA, right? So yesterday when we were speaking about it, they have the new DPUs that are kind of blowing up. Um, it's going to revolutionize how computers uh, basically process data, take some weight off the CPU, so therefore we get some faster computers. Um, we were talking at it about 297, and it really popped up above the 300 mark, and it's now, looks like it's approaching 310. We're up almost 3% today at 2.5%. I was reading through some things earlier today, and one of the things I saw was NVIDIA's price-to-sales ratio. We're sitting at about 30 for NVIDIA. I came across then something of a quote from a CEO of a company called Microsystems, uh, which was sold to Oracle a few years back for about $8 billion. Right after the dot-com bust, it was valued at $200 billion. So this company, again, this is Sun Microsystems. Again, this is now, this is now acquired by Oracle, far gone. But they were responsible for developing a programming language called Spark, which is based off Java. These guys did MySQL, which if, if you're in IT at all, you know, obviously MySQL is huge. Uh, Solaris OS and VirtualBox, which is one of Oracle's huge products, is, is VirtualBox. And so this is what he said with a, with a PS ratio of, of 10 at this time. He says, at 10 times revenues, to give you in a 10-year payback, I have to pay you 100% of revenues for 10 years straight in dividends. That assumes I can get that by my shareholders. That assumes I have zero cost of goods sold, which is very hard for a computer company. That assumes zero expenses, which is really hard with 39,000 employees. That assumes I pay no taxes, which is very hard, and that assumes that you pay no taxes on your dividends, which is illegal. And that assumes with zero research and development for the next 10 years that I can maintain the current revenue run rate. Now, having done that, would any of you like to buy my stock at $64? Do you realize how ridiculous those basic assumptions are? You don't need any transparency. You don't need any footnotes. And that's, that is a pretty, uh, I think you could probably apply that to a lot of things going on. Again, I, you know, the way that the market is now, it seems like we might be in a new paradigm. It has been stress, test, uh, stress tested uh, significantly. And we still have these stocks uh, kind of performing at this level. But it's just kind of interesting to kind of go back through memory lane. I mean, I don't, I think I was like five after that time period, uh, so I don't obviously remember it, but um, just kind of going back and, and reading what people's thoughts were, and I, I think it's, it's interesting, at least for just like edification purposes. Uh, moving into, or sticking with the kind of technology for the time being, obviously Tommy spoke about uh, on his show the TikTok ban in Montana, and I certainly believe that is going to extend out uh, there's a lot of issues with it. Of course, you have the risk of uh, foreign nations spying on you, right, collecting data. Well, but th this goes so much further than just TikTok. And so it's, it's interesting that they, I think TikTok's just on the, the limelight, right? Like so many people use TikTok. People on there can be so influential in the culture. It's, it's honestly unbelievable. Yeah, people my age and below, uh, I've never used TikTok. I, I know what it's like. I, I've seen some things from it. Um, but people I have who are close to me, uh, the new ideas coming in all the time from TikTok, even if they're not valid, right? Like, there's one that's going around, and so many people now are talking about it and are raging against it. You know, we put fluoride in the water, um, and there, were, there was a TikTok that came out saying that if you boil your water for stuff like tea or whatever, it creates fluorine gas which is a neurotoxin, blah, blah, blah. This isn't true at all. It's, it's, that's not how you derive fluorine gas. Um, but nonetheless, it spread like wildfire throughout my generation to the extent that I hear it just randomly in conversation, right? Like they'll bring it up, oh, did you hear this? And it goes beyond 
just the risk of like fake news. I mean, people can be so influential on TikTok. It doesn't really matter the veracity of their claims or what they're pushing. It, the, the name of the game is can I be influential and can I get people to believe what I'm saying, right? And maybe that's how it's always been and that's kind of part of the human condition, but it's so much, it, it can spread uh, with so much more ease now. Um, regarding any kind of threat of kind of data harvesting um, from basically China, this is in so many of our goods. Uh, I was speaking about it, I think, a few months ago, but there is a, there's a Riot Games, okay? They release a lot of very popular video games. There's one in particular called Valorant, right? Um, this has, I think, 20 million users worldwide, millions in America. And one of the th things you have to do in order to play this game is download one of their anti-cheats. And what that does is it looks at your computer to see what you're running, right? And it stops you from basically cheating in the game. But the problem is, is that anti-cheat downloads into your kernel on the computer, which is the basic level of your computer, the basic level of your operating system. And it can basically affect everything else all the way up to your, uh, like in your computer, essentially. So obviously that's a massive security concern that you have, you know, how many hundreds of thousands of computers in America just because of Valorant that now have a kernel level access, uh, or at least um, companies that are outside of our country have kernel level access to. This is pretty intense, right? And we even go into stuff which is everyone uses, but it's not in our minds, but it's IOTs, right? The internet of things. There was this famous story of, um, it, it, I forget the company, but they were producing vacuums, right? And for whatever reason, your vacuum could connect to the Wi-Fi. And we have this for everything. You have refrigerators that connect to Wi-Fi. We, your, your cameras that you use to watch your house connect to Wi-Fi. This is what's called the Internet of Things, right? And this security researcher discovered that his vacuum cleaner was sending data back to a server in China. Now, what can they do with that? It's, it's unclear. Is it like a massive security flaw in something like a vacuum? Maybe not, but it just goes to show that even something so basic as like household cleaning goods are communicating with uh, servers outside of our nation. It's very interesting, um, and I, I don't think it's spoken about enough, right? Like if you're gonna talk about TikTok, it's important to talk about things like ring cameras. Like, do you know where that information is being stored on what server, who owns it? Right, like these are genuine questions, and there's a burgeoning group of people on the internet who are creating their own servers. They're called Home Labs, um, and these store all the information um, for your camera, so you, you can buy cheap ones and kind of set them up to a server you have at home, and therefore you're in total control. Now that takes away a lot of convenience, and so the chances are that a large swath of the population is going to do that is very low. But it's still important to keep in mind when we talk about things like TikTok and data going uh, to places like China, we gotta understand that so many things are sending data to servers that we as individuals don't really have control over and could very well be going to places like China. So it's interesting to talk about. I think it's some food for thought and I'd, I'd recommend just in your personal time looking more into that because it's super interesting, you know, and I think it does have like an impact on us and going forward in the future as well. When we get back, We'll stay on the China topic, some interesting stuff with some corporate espionage they're doing, and then really, you know, how uh, inextricable we are with uh, the Chinese markets. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, welcome back. Before I hop back in to everything, I want to say just the ad that ran right before we got back. The Tiger's Den, the, the Discord server, guys, you got to get in it. Like, I'm reading the conversation right now. It's awesome. Uh, I learned so much from these guys in here. It's invaluable. At $1 a year, like, year, it's, I don't know, we're basically giving it away. There's a step-by-step -step process of how to get everything on our website. Super straightforward. Uh, but I just wanted to plug that quickly because it's, I think it's great, and I learn so much, especially being a younger guy um, and only knowing things in investment and finance and economics from, from college, having like that kind of real world talk, you know, if you're, if you're just getting into this kind of stuff, maybe you're coming from like another sector or something, or you just want to learn it really $1 a year. It's so worth it. Um, before we hop into, you know, go back to talking about some things with China and the corporate espionage. Um, I want to talk about Sony quickly, cause this is interesting and I didn't really realize they had this. Um, but they're considering selling an $8 billion financial business that they have. It's uh, Sony Holdings. So this is, is nuts. These guys are just dominant. It, it blows my mind. So Sony Group is considering spinning off its insurance and online banking unit, which again, I was not aware that they had, uh, responding to longstanding calls from some investors to focus on its core entertainment business. All right. The partial spinoff would include a listing of the financial business, which was worth more than $8 billion when Sony delisted it in 2020. Uh, the stock obviously rose quite a bit, but that was 6.4% Thursday as a writing of this, uh, as investors welcomed the plan, as well as share buyback of about $1.45 billion that was announced on Wednesday. So it's saying they flipped back and forth over the years about how to handle its financial arm, which serves mostly Japanese customer, uh, excuse me, consumers with products such as life insurance and online bank accounts. Uh, the business, while bringing in steady profit, has only limited connections to other Sony businesses, such as PlayStation video game machines and image sensors used in Apple phones. Uh, this is a quote from Hiroki Totoki, who's a Sony executive. He says, we'll need bigger investment in image sensors and entertainment in the futures. Uh, in the future. Uh, initially listed financial holdings in 2007. Anyways, the point is, this is pretty nuts that they have an arm that is so... Uh, that's just so large like that. And I, I would assume like, you know, getting that at 8 billion and then dumping it really back into like Sony's core business would be positive for this company. And, and the way that the Japanese do business blows my mind. There's a, a seg, uh, well, how do I say it? Like a short little like, YouTube show 
um, from Insider, and it's kind of like, uh, it's called Why Is This So Expensive or something like that, and so many things revolve around Japanese products and kind of the style that they do business in, and it is like forever uh, encapsul encapsulating. I mean, it, it just, they go through everything, you learn about the cold, anyways, um, I think this is neat. I wanted to talk about this a little more. Um, we'll see if we can pump the 100, even on this news, which, you know, wasn't much news beyond them mulling over selling it. Um, it had a pretty big hike, low, lower volume, um, but, uh, or at least not as high a volume. But it's interesting to look at. And again, I was just surprised that Sony had such a large uh, kind of influence, you know? So anyways, I want to move uh, to this quickly. And this is, uh, oops, that is not what I want to move to. I want to move to this. So Petrobras discovers hydrocarbons in Brazil's Santos Basin. Uh, Brazilian state-owned oil and gas giant Petrobras has discovered hydrocarbons in an exploratory well in the Aram block in Santos Basin pre-salt offshore Brazil. This country, and really all throughout South America, is so uh, resource-rich, it blows my mind. Um, according to Petrobras, this, uh, the well is being drilled and the oil bearing interval was verified through electrical profiles okay, and fluid samples, which will be later characterized through la uh, laboratory analyses. The data is expected to enable assessment of the potential and uh, direct the next exploratory activities in the area. Let me see if I can pull something up for you here. Yeah, that's what I thought, but let's just be sure. So we can check this out. It's still down a little bit, but regardless, um, this is definitely something to look into. And if they and if they find more, this is pretty good uh, uh, for everyone involved, <laughs> at least on, on this edge. Um, a little bit movement too, more into some gas kind of news because uh, I know people like trading it on here. Um, this is from Financial Times. This is the halt button hit on drilling uh, in the U.S. oil and gas slowdown. Uh, new rigs aus auctioned at bargain prices as demand sags in the shale patch. Now, the government is going to start buying uh, more in June uh, in order to refill the strategic reserves that were basically exhausted. Um, so that will probably keep at least demand stable and maybe maintain equilibrium at a certain level. Um, but this is still interesting, again, on a macro level. Um, next week, the Texas auctioneer Cruz Asset Management will put two unused top-of-the-line drilling rigs under the hammer. The towering structures designed to bore oil and gas wells are on offer for fire sale prices. Valued at $40 million, $30 million, when built in 2019, so not that long ago, four years ago. Uh, their respective starting bids will be 12 and 2.3. Talk about a uh, reduced price there. So drilling tapers off in the U.S. shale patch. It's just, I, again... It's so interesting to see how all this kind of goes on. And I really, the more I see kind of like news heads like this, I think it's easy to overlook stuff like this because everyone wants to talk about, you know, your big tech moves and, and Tesla and stuff like this. But this is so important to understand too, just for the uh, trajectory forward of the country as a whole. Um, it's pretty interesting stuff and I would recommend, you know, looking out into it. So what I was talking about before uh, was some corporate espionage that is occurring, right? And actually something recently happened with Apple as well, and we can get to that. Um, but this is, the, this is from last year, um, but the U.S. sentences chemists for theft of Coca-Cola secrets worth $120 million. And what they were doing was stealing the secret. And this is a little, <laughs> this is, uh, in this way, I don't maybe fully blame the guy. Um, they were trying to find out um, the lining in uh, Coca-Cola cans and really all cans, you know, I know it's it's aluminum on the outside, uh, but they actually use a plastic liner on the inside. Um, and Coca-Cola was trying to figure out how to get a BPA free version of it. Now, obviously, I'm very much opposed to corporate espionage. This is uh, worth 120 million was were these secrets. Um, According to the Mayo Clinic, exposure to BPA can lead to possible health effects on the brain, the prostate gland of fetuses. Good Lord. Infants and children, yeah, that's not good. Um, anyways, this is super interesting. And uh, foreign nationals for so long um, have been, you know, getting in and doing corporate espionage. It's pretty amazing. Well, I had a class on that in college, and just we went through all of the stories. I mean, even ones going back to, like, the 1700s. It's nuts. Um, 
And so the reason why I'm saying this, and it kind of ties in and setting kind of the stage for this, uh, is the DOG, the DOJ alleges that former Apple engineers uh, stole self-driving code from Chinese companies. And so this is kind of beyond the scope of like, okay, maybe he stole it. So the Chinese people aren't drinking BPA. Um, this is definitely, you know, a real clear cut case of, of stealing you know, proprietary software um, and, and using it. And we'll get a little bit more into that. I'll just run through it quickly and maybe kind of the consequences it has uh, for Apple um, when we get back. Um, so folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right. We got some serious movement in the queues right now going up. Um, there's some light volume right now, but we'll see what happens. Uh, there might be like a double top forming on it, but we'll see. Anyways, I just want to bring that to your attention. We had one of the subscribers reach out via email. Um, so waiting on some uh, more emails back from him, but interesting to look at and uh, yeah, the cues are soaring today. Um, all right, so going back to Apple quickly, obviously news like this doesn't like always really like affect us. Um, but 
Essentially what happened is the Department of Justice announced uh, last Tuesday that Wei Bao Wang, uh, who worked for Apple from 2016 to 2018 on the annotation team, is being charged with six counts of theft uh, from Apple's entire autonomy source code, which is nuts. Uh, the tracking systems, behavior planning for autonomous systems, and descriptions of the hardware used. Uh, Wong reportedly had broad access to databases, which like, it, for, from the security perspective, you never want to do. Um, so at the time, only 5% of Apple's employees even knew about the project. This is pretty nuts. There's another story. Um, and I, this, I'll just have a quick summary. Uh, it was a company, I think in Ohio, uh, that was developing technology for windmills, right? Like, you know, wind turbines. And uh, basically got stolen one day. And then the same technology popped up in China. And this company lost all of its income, uh, all of its revenue, because their major uh, consumer was in China. It's pretty nuts. Um, now, what is, like, can we actually get away from these, from these kind of practices? Can we actually get out from our uh, relationships with China since, you know, this is kind of the relationship we seem to have? And this is kind of visualizes just how interconnected, this is from Morgan Stanley, just how interconnected we are uh, with China. So, like, the short answer is, like, probably not without severe uh, consequences, right? I'll, I'll link this chart in the den as well. Uh, but just super interesting to take a look at. And you could probably get lost in this for a few minutes. Um, but yeah, it just shows you like if there is some serious stuff that goes on. And I think on the same end too, like China doesn't want to do anything uh, too big. I mean, obviously we are like, <laughs> we have some tolerance for them stealing uh, IP. Uh, it's probably because of something like this, right? So they're going to continue to do it, but they probably won't do anything too extreme that would uh, jeopardize this insane uh, network. So anyways, I thought that was interesting. Another thing too I've been seeing a lot of is talking about the M2 uh, reduction. And again, I like, yes, we're seeing a retraction of M2, but like, let's seriously take a look from like 2020 before everything took off, right? Can you get it? March. Look, I mean, we're still back. We're not even close back to that level, right? Um, you know, if we really, the way we want to look at it too is like the amount that this goes down, are we going to still see the same kind of increase if we had like a linear kind of pattern on this, right? And um, it's getting to a point like if it reduces down enough, we would be on the same track that we were on had COVID not happened, right? We just need a bit more of a retracement on this. Um, but I just kind of want to bring the, to everyone's attention, just kind of take a look at it um, because there's so much talk around it. And I'm not sure we're at a, a point yet where it's like so significant um, that, that it uh, has any kind of like impact on the long term. But the more this M2 supplies gets dwindled down, if it goes past the point of this linear um, regression, then yeah, then we're kind of in an issue. Um, so as that happens, if it does happen, we'll take a look at it. The other thing I wanted to look at, we had a, another subscriber email me taking a look at uh, the SPX and margin debt. So this is like basically margin trading and kind of how that affects everything. This was interesting. So this stops in 2021. Um, and so through 2022, we actually had a reduction essentially of on like the, on the full term, I guess, of uh, margin debt. But now in 2023, we're ramping it back up again. But I just thought this was kind of interesting. And it, and it seems when you, you know, kind of get a pullback of margin debt, the SPX sends off, right? And so I'll, I'm filling in tomorrow as well. So I'll try to find a more like, uh, I suppose, recent one for it, but just seeing how this pattern works, right? Like you get this pull off down here and then you get a shoot up and then that kind of follows through up on it. Um, obviously having like margin debt, like can in some ways like inflate um, the SPX, right? Uh, Cause you're taking everything out on loan. Um, but I don't know. I thought that was interesting and I'd never seen it. And someone asked about it and I just took a quick look at it. Um, I thought it was neat. I don't know. All right. Let's take a look here. We were talking about GE yesterday and this was interesting. You know, they got that contract with NASA and actually their finance chief, Dybeck Hapa, is going to step down. Uh, so General Electric said on Thursday that Carolina Dybeck Hapa would step down as finance chief of the industrial giant um, as it prepares to complete the spinoffs of its businesses next year. This is so interesting. I'm really gonna take a, a closer look at General Electric and maybe revise the way I was looking at it yesterday when I was like, maybe this isn't really growth. I don't know. 
Um, but I'm going to be following this company a lot more. Uh, Rahul Gai uh, will become the CFO of GE, effective September 1st, while retaining his role as the finance chief of GE Aerospace. Interesting. Uh, which he has held since August 2022. So, um, yeah, they get some big movements going on in GE. It'll be interesting to see when their campus uh, gets fixed as well. We stick with the we stick with the AI conversation. We've been talking about it a lot. Um, the the guy who let's see what is his name, uh, the Open AI CF or CEO was just in Congress. Sam Sam Altman, he had a great great showing at Congress and kind of how he spoke um, about basically controls that should be on AI and kind of like the mass impacts it could actually have on the long term and regarding the safety of people's data. Um, but this is here, Goldman Sachs says AI could push S&P 500 profits up by 30% in the next decade. Uh, over the next 10 years, AI could increase productivity by 1.5% per year, and that could increase uh, the SPX profits by 30% or more over the next decade, Goldman Sachs senior strategist Ben Snyder said. Uh, recommended that investors should spread their U.S. equity investments in cyclical and defense sectors. You know, we've been talking about that here on TFNN, uh, touting the energy and healthcare sectors for their attractive valuations. The emergence of ChatGPT, the chatbot developed by OpenAI, has spurred a firestorm of interest in AI and the possible disruptions to the daily lives of many. And keep in mind, guys, this is just like a chat model. You know, this is not like Skynet or anything. This is just a, uh, an algorithm that is really good at predicting what a human wants to hear and can get you information quickly. So imagine we like really pushes to the max and imagine we start networking AI together, right? Like that could be really, really massive and disruptive. Um, and I, I do think they're probably, yeah, of course, we always get these uh, revolutions that essentially uh, change the landscape of the job market, right? Uh, but I think this one is going to be a bit different. Not that there won't be new jobs created that people can go into, but how are we going to get uh, people who are still trying to basically pursue jobs of your um, into these sectors, right? Like this is a big problem with like younger men and stuff like that, right? They want to do what their dads and granddads did when really the, the major stuff now is, you know, going to become, if you're not doing STEM, you're going to be doing what's called HEAL and that's, you know, healthcare, education uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think there probably will need to be, you know, some, some kind of movement towards helping people get into these positions when AI um, really takes off and starts really changing the landscape. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee. 
at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, so someone in the den, again, get in the den. Um, just talk about boil. This thing's up 8%. Today. That's that is really uh, insane. That's the natural gas from Bloomberg ETF. Um, something to look at, though. What what a run up! I love these little ETFs too. They're just so they're I, they're very alluring, which is probably not you know great, especially when you're someone who's trying to like get experience and stuff like that. But I, uh, anyways, it's worth a note. Pretty interesting. One of the things I wanted to talk about was Cisco, right? Now these guys are huge in IT to go on a year-to-date these guys just to give you a look of what's going on uh, so basically the earnings top estimates uh, but Cisco stock still falls on uh, quote-unquote modest fiscal 2024 expectations these guys are selling routers switches firewalls they have their own um, service as well I have, I have a family member who's uh, incident response for Cisco they do everything they're they are massive uh, shares in Cisco fell Thursday as analysts mold the company's quote modest outlook for revenue growth in 2024 for the period ended in April 30th, Cisco uh, earnings were $1 per share, up 15% uh, from a year earlier. Uh, revenue for Cisco stock came in at $14.6 billion, up 14%, including acquisitions. Pretty nice. Analysts expected Cisco earnings of $0.97 cents a share on sales of $14.39 billion. A year earlier, Cisco earnings were $0.87 cents a share. Uh, and the tech giant reported results after the market closed yesterday. Uh, the stock fell 4% due to it but we're only down uh, a little bit right now there's a lot of volatility moving in right here with this um at least price wise uh but at the time of writing this it was at 45.74 we're obviously back at 47 right now it's a pretty solid company um i mean i use their like if i have a home lab or something like that they have such cheap firewalls or such cheap like servers or whatever um and it's nice so the 23 percent order growth decline in april followed the 22 percent decline in january uh, order surged in early calendar of 2022. Uh, Raymond James is looking at it, and um, the retreat may reflect fiscal 2024 growth be below expectations. I don't know. We'll see what happens. If you want to look at, like, and obviously these are vastly different sectors and everything, but you look at these, like, sell-offs that happen. Like, if people just like the company, they like the company. And this Home Depot move was honestly insane. Um, let's see if we can do... Uh, let's do a one year on it. But you know, you had this massive sell off and then we just came right back up, uh, even above the level before the quarterlies came, before the earn earnings came out. It's pretty nuts. Go to the one month. Yeah, so I mean, you had this massive sell off, right? And then today and yesterday, you were above the level that it was at before the earnings came out. And this is like, you can see this in a lot. Uh, same thing with like Square, even though that wasn't. Uh, earnings that was the, the Hindenburg report uh, but it sells off and people are just like hey listen I, I like this company we're just gonna buy it back and now it's sitting even higher than it was and same thing with Cisco uh, we will hop back to that real quick because I want to finish up that story 
um, because it is interesting. And, you know, looking into security and stuff like that, again, I really do think uh, that one of the big sectors that has been uh, avoided, mainly probably because it just is kind of arcane to a lot of people. Um, but this level of security is going to be so important uh, it going forward in the future, especially as we continue to virtualize everything. Um, and that's not going to get any different. Uh, let's see here. So for the current period ending in July, um, that was last year, Cisco fourth quarter, the company forecast earnings of 106 a share. Uh, meanwhile, Cisco said it expects revenue growth of 15% versus projection of 14% growth uh, to $14.95 billion. So, you know, take a look at this. Uh, we'll see how this shakes out today if it stays like constant at this 47 area. Uh, that would be interesting to see kind of like the general outlook um, that people have on its health, you know. But again, if we, we finish like above that, you know, we're finishing, if we finish like at this mark, we are finishing above again what the earnings were. And while that seems to be kind of um, consistent throughout the whole market, um, I, I still do think that looking at Cisco uh, is important. Obviously, you have on like technicals, you have a massive drop with, uh, with pretty big volume, uh, but, but we are testing that upper level again. Um, so if we can get that on some volume by the end of the day and even settle above it uh, going into tomorrow, uh, that might be kind of good looks technically for Cisco. All right, so we were talking yesterday about possibility of defaulting. You know, someone said, I, and I was reading on some forums, that like even if we pass this, which I'm sure we will, right, um, th you know, the consequences of not passing this are, th it's an event horizon, right, if we would actually defaulted. We have no idea what the impact uh, would be of something like that, uh, but I do still think that they're going to pass something. But someone was saying that it makes America lose a little bit of prestige, <clears throat> and I know that's an intangible, excuse me, but it is kind of like real, and it does have tangible effects, right? Like, even if we do pass this, this is everywhere, and this is one of the worst kind of impasses I've seen um, in my life regarding the debt default. Um, so this is asking how Wall Street is preparing for possible U.S. debt default, uh, which is super interesting. We'll do a quick overview as talks over raising the U.S. government's $31.4 trillion debt ceiling intensifies. Wall Street banks and asset managers have begun preparing for the fallout from a potential default. All right, so let's look. Obviously, we kind of have a slight idea of the immediate effects, like what it, what it means on paper. But again, I think there are tons of... Uh, impact that it would have and we just we can't really foresee that because it's never really happened. Um, so how are the institutions preparing? Banks, brokers and trading platforms are prepping for disruption to the treasury market as well as broader volatility. Obviously treasuries uh, are the notes are down today. Um, so this generally includes game planning, how payments on treasury securities would be handled, how critical funding markets would react, ensuring sufficient technology, staffing capacity, so on and so forth. Big bond investors have cautioned that maintaining high levels of liquidity was important to withstand potential violent asset price moves. This would be so insane. I mean, just even thinking about it in that capacity. And to avoid having to sell the worst at possible times. Uh, securities industry and uh, basically SIFMA, uh, a leading industry group, has a playbook detailing how treasury market stakeholders, um, the fixed income clearing corporations, clearing banks, and treasury dealers would communicate ahead of and during the potential missed treasury payments. Be nuts, but what is interesting is we have this today as well. The tide is turning in favor of the bond market. And we have seen, um, you know, a, a run up essentially, right? Which that's, that's nice for, in some ways, the economy as a whole because that's pressing down uh, interest rates. Obviously bond prices and their return are inversely related and that kind of has impacts throughout the rest of the market. Um, but. So, the brief moment, the tide is neither ebbing nor flowing. Uh, there was a nightmare for bond investors last year. U.S. Treasuries fell 13, uh, while gilts were down 25. That get gilt crisis was so insane. Um, High-yield bonds did better than safer investment-grade issues. Although, I would still say there's a lot of cash that just exists. So, it's not in bonds, it's not in equities. I think it's an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of cash kind of on the sidelines right now. Which, can you blame people, right? Uh, the good news is that what created headwinds for investors last year, looking that it will provide a tailwind in 2023, 
Last year, interest rates were hiked in response to soaring energy and food inflation and red-hot labor market. We are still waiting for that tide to turn, and May has seen further rate hikes in U.S. and Europe. Folks, stay tuned. We have just a little bit left. Um, we got an interesting story for you when we get back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, one of the things I wanted to close with, because we've been talking about it in the past, um, this headline is uh, about basically the fusion energy startup. I just have the cues up right now, just looking at it, some interesting moves. But what we're talking about here. Um, is the Japanese fusion industry, um, which is so nuts. And this is making helium, basically. So 16 companies in Japan, including Mitsubishi, Kansai Electric, and some government-affiliated funds, are writing a $73.6 million investment in startups working to commercialize fusion power. And they're trying to get this really up by 2024. The ultimate goal is to move towards implementing and developing fusion, uh, which makes heat by combining hydrogen atoms to make helium. Uh, and that combination creates energy. Uh, fuels that can be used for fusion uh, that can be drawn from seawater and are practically inexhaustible. Uh, Nikkei uh, notes that uh, the Mitsui Co. and J Power Inpex and 10 other companies, including MUFG Bank and JIC Venture Growth Investments, uh, are all in. And let's keep in mind, too, this isn't just like Japanese 
um, kind of side. Companies like Microsoft are even investing in things like Helion Energy. Uh, this would be, this would obviously revolutionize how our planet gets power, how it absorbs it, and um, you know, it's low pollution and stuff like that. So I think we can all kind of root for something like that on the long term. Uh, they use something called uh, gyrotrons, which heat the plasma basically, and that facilitates the reaction. It's pretty neat. And they, uh, Kyoto Fusioneering, which is the company that's getting that massive endowment, um, they're the leader in development of gyrotrons. Gyrotrons, excuse me. This is cool too. This has been in the news. We'll wrap this up really quickly. Um, the bioengineers are building hearts, basically, with 3D printing. Uh, this has been going on for a while, but it's getting bigger. They're basically printing out the structure of hearts um, and really can do this with any organ. And they're just putting cells, heart cells on it, essentially. And that forms a new heart. It's from your cells that doesn't get uh, rejected by the body. This is huge. It's obviously in its nascent stage, but we'll see what happens with it. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be back tomorrow. Basil will be back Monday. Um, 